Mountain Tech here. Now, I know that a lot of you don't like this format, and I'm just going to ask you to just give it a chance because right now it, it takes me several hours to make one of my usual videos, four or five hours sometimes, and uh, it would just be a lot easier for me. I could put out a lot more content and, and tell you guys about a lot more that's going on out there if I can do more of these kind of videos because they just don't require the uh, same amount of time to edit and I, I can just pump these out so this could be you know really good for the channel and I can get way more information out to all my subscribers so I just asking give it a chance despite the whistleblower backing off their accusations and the Ukrainian Prime Minister confirming that there was no discussion of any special deals to restart the investigation so Besides all that, besides those inconvenient facts, the Democrats in their media are still trying to push forward on uh, this U new Ukrainian narrative. And uh, they all seem very sure that they got him this time. They got him. All the other times they were sure they got him. But this time, for real, this despite, you know, the dossier, the, you know, the Russian collusion, which which is done, the obstruction, which is done, uh, you know, the Russian spy story that we just had. uh you know, there was those uh, SDNY investigations that, you know, after uh, after the Mueller report came out and, uh, you know, there's no collusion in there. The media was sure that the SDNY uh, DNC lawsuit would be the thing to take them down. Well, guess what? That was dismissed. So that's gone. Uh, the Russian oligarch loads. That's gone. The Kavanaugh impeachment. So there's been a long, long line of uh, examples of the media being sure that they have Trump this time. And uh, big surprise, it all turned out to be a bunch of spin. Uh, but what we're seeing now is peak Trump derangement syndrome. And from a Republican, no less, a never Trumper, uh, former Governor Bill Weld, who went on MSNBC yesterday on the Morning Joe show with, uh, you know, fake Republican Joe Scarborough to say that Trump should be executed for treason. I mean, we've heard a lot of whoppers up to this point, uh, but straight up calling for the execution of a sitting president because basically because you don't like him, because the, the, the claim here is that there's treason, but absolutely no evidence is presented for this treason. We, we have, we have no evidence. And in fact, there's evidence to the contrary. Um, the, the whistleblower who came forward has been backing off, off of their claims. And, uh, the Ukrainian prime minister straight up said that there was no discussion like that. He did not offer any deals or, or anything like that uh, in order to start up an investigation. So all the evidence we have so far is that nothing happened. And, and this is all just yet another. You can just add this to the list of fake stories that we've had to deal with since Trump was elected. Canceling primaries uh, undermines uh, democratic institutions and democratic elections. But... That's far from the, the uh, deepest die crime that the uh, president has committed here. He's now acknowledged that in a single phone call, right after he suspended $250 million of military aid to Ukraine, he called up the president of Ukraine and, and pressed him eight times to investigate Joe Biden, who the president thinks is going to be running against him. Talk. Okay, again, that's kind of strange because, for one, we have no evidence that that occurred. And, in fact, we have evidence to the contrary, like I talked about before. But this sounds a lot like a, what Joe Biden did. He suspended a billion dollars that was supposed to go to Ukraine unless they fired this prosecutor, a prosecutor who just happened to be investigating corruption and Joe Biden's son's company. About pressuring a foreign country to interfere with and control a U.S. election, it couldn't be clearer. And that's not just undermining democratic institutions. Uh Okay, and again, uh, that's undermining an election. If Joe Biden is investigated, that's undermining an election. I don't see how, especially when Hillary Clinton funded in her uh, campaign, funded uh, a, a dossier that was dirt on Trump that was procured from Ukrainian intelligence, Ukrainian and Russian intelligence. Did Hillary Clinton commit treason? Did Joe Biden commit treason? He's not accusing them of committing treason, which is strange because he's a Republican, not a Democrat, yet seems to be working for the Democrat media and the Democrat Party right now. That is treason. It's treason pure and simple. And the penalty for treason under the U.S. Code is death. That's the only penalty. The, the penalty under the Constitution is removal from office. And that might look like a pretty good alternative to the president if he could work out a plea deal. 
So there you have it, folks. Uh, <laughs> apparently, they're to the point where they want to literally execute the president. Uh, I, I wonder if he's even considered the ramifications of not only just saying that, but if it were to actually occur. I mean, that would almost certainly tear this country apart and lead to a civil war. It's treason, pure and simple. So pure and simple, yet I, I, have, I can't see it at all. And the penalty for treason under U.S. code is death. That's the only penalty. And here again, we see this. I, I've seen this just propensity, usually from the left. Uh, you know, I haven't really seen it from Republicans, but just this this desire to just just kill or murder your political opposition. They, you know, you know, you can't beat them in an election, so you try to take them out with impeachment, even though there's nothing to impeach them for. You know, they they keep saying, "Oh, he's done all this stuff every day to get impeached." You'll notice they never say what that is. They just sort of broadly, it's just like the ten thousand lies thing. You know, oh, he lies. There's ten thousand lies. Yeah, right. Ten thousand lies. Sure. The penalty here is death for treason, even though again we have no evidence. The penalty under the Constitution is removal from office, and that might look like a pretty good alternative to the president if he can work out a plea deal a plea like what is he talking about a plea deal Th to get a plea deal you have to have uh you got to be arraigned and you have to have charges you have to be indicted and then a plea like nothing we're he's getting a little bit ahead of himself here getting a little excited thinking that he might actually have a chance in this election if he could just kill trump obviously he thought that this was uh, maybe something he could say to get you know Democrats on his side, or maybe get uh, media attention. Uh, maybe he needs money right now uh, to to actually go up against Trump in the primaries, and he thinks that this is gonna <laughs> make the make the money start rolling in. I seriously doubt that. This is the craziest thing I've heard up to this point. I thought that the craziest thing that I had ever heard was from MSNBC again uh, and Nicole Wallace when she was actually claiming that Trump wants to exterminate. Latinos. She actually came out and said that. Uh, if you're like me, you were sitting there stunned and wondering when Trump has suggested anything like that. In words and actions throughout his presidency, he's basically declared open season on, on, on Latinos because we are one of his fav favorite targets. President Obama used the power of the presidency mm -hmm. to try to pass comprehensive immigration reform with the Latino community, Latino leaders at the table. You now have a president, as you said, talking about exterminating right. Latinos. In and words and just actions. Just to point out here, uh, Barack Obama housed even more kids, uh, up to 90,000 unaccompanied kids in these same detention centers, in these same cages. And yet, Barack Obama had such a good relationship with the Latinos. Well, maybe that's because the media didn't make an issue of it back then. They only made an issue of it now and created this, this firestorm purely for politics, purely to hurt Trump. So her guest on the show says, in words and actions throughout his presidency, he's basically declared open season on Latinos because we are the, one of his favorite targets. What? I... I I can't think of a single time I've heard Trump target Latinos. I, and in fact, Latinos in this country are doing better than they've ever done historically in this country because Trump's economy is just so good. He's he's raising all these people up, uh, black Americans, Latino Americans, both doing better than they've ever done. Yet somehow it's open season and I have no idea what he's talking about. You have no idea what he's talking about. Through this, Nicole Wallace said that Trump wants to exterminate Latinos, which she did have to eventually apologize for and and look at this she she misspoke about trump calling for the extermination of latinos it was just an accident just an accident it's always an accident like i said there's been uh dozens and dozens of examples of the media and democrats promoting literally death against the president and and their political opposition in general which uh, included eric swalwell who uh was running for president isn't anymore it's not not hard to see why but he actually said that Trump is a Russian agent. He said Donald Trump works on behalf of Russia. When he meets with Vladimir Putin, he won't tell the country what he said, and he essentially took the notes from the interpreter. I'm sorry. I, I'm just not seeing how Trump works on Russia's behalf. He's been arming Ukraine since he took office, you, uh, giving Ukrainians arms that are killing Russian soldiers. He actually bombed a Syrian target uh, that had Russian soldiers and killed Russian soldiers. Um, and that's a lot more than you can say for Barack Obama, who uh, neglected to arm Ukraine for his entire administration after um, Russia went in. And uh, only at the very end of his administration did he actually start giving arms to Ukraine. Uh, and, and this is the same Barack Obama who you know, told the Russian leader at the time um, when he was president that after the election he would be more flexible 
to do more for Russia. That's kind of weird. I mean, based on the media standards, wouldn't that be very questionable since he didn't want to arm Ukraine and is telling them that after the election he'll have more flexibility to work with them, the Russians? If we have a Russian agent in the White House, for real, if we really do, again, it's incumbent on all American citizens to rise up and depose him. But that's not happening. The Democrats aren't raising any armies. None of that's happening. So I don't think they actually believe it, yet... They could easily incite somebody to take action, as we've seen with the ICE facilities. Thanks, everybody. I really appreciate it. Uh, Make sure to go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I really appreciate you all watching. Even if you don't like this format, I promise just stick with it. It'll get better, and I can put out a lot more content this way. And the other videos will not stop. I'm going to continue making those videos. But this is good. I can make these to just sort of pad it out, get out more information, because there's tons of stories that I have to skip every day because I just simply don't have the time to focus on them for one video. This will allow me to do that. So thank you for watching. Keep coming back.